Hey, comicbook.com. BD here at San Diego Comic-Con. And right now, I'm thrilled to be talking about Berserker, the creative geniuses behind it. We have Keanu Reeves, we have Matt Kent, and we have Ron Garney. Thank you for taking the time to talk. First of all, Keanu, I have to come to you first. Okay. You've, you've done some really cool stuff in your career, but I feel like creating a comic book and then getting to physically hold it and know High people- High on the list. How does, that, how does that feel when that first happens? It's amazing. Um, you know, to go from an idea and then have the support of Boom Studios as a publisher who then introduced me. You know, I'd never made it, been a part of a comic book, so I think they were like, let's get them some people who know what they're doing. So then they, you know, introduced Matt Kent and then Ron Garney, who's, you know, they're both kind of in the G-O-A-T's in the, um, in the comic book world. And so it's been a really great experience to be able to collaborate with them. I'd love to hear about that. What, what, what has Keanu brought to it that uh, you've got to work with as a new comic book writer? No, I'm, well, first of all, he goes in and fixes all of the dialogue. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, but no, it, what's funny is like, you may not, this is your first comic, but I swear we were working on the last issue and, and I'm listening to you and you're like, you're talking about page turns and panel counts and everything. And I was like, yeah, like, it's like I, I can't wait. The kid has learned. I can't wait to see what you do after this. <laughs> I was like, you. I'm like, Garney, we're giving Garney too many panels. We're not giving him space to draw. And I'm like, no, no, no. We were supposed to torture the artist. <laughs> when, 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 <laughs> it's not me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. When you're writing Berserker, do you write it with any of uh, like Keanu's skills from, from other films or things that he's put on display uh, and help it influence the character at all? I don't think, I don't, I don't approach it that way at all. Like we talked about it and it really was like your original idea. And like when you're pitching it to me, I just... I try to clear my head and like take all of that away and then just like try to make it what your vision originally was. And then, and then there's, I feel like there's personal things in there that, that sort of work as subtext or whatever, but I, I don't want to be, I don't like to think about that stuff too much. I'd rather just like, we tell our story and then whatever it means, whatever it is, is what it is rather than like, Oh, here's what it means. And then we put it in there. It's kind of like interview with the vampire when Lestat is telling his story to the, to the, you know, to a Christian Slater, I think it was, or whatever. That's what I picture him just sitting there, like, recording all this stuff, and Keanu's just telling this story, you know. Um, the detail is is pretty remarkable, and it's, um, you know, right down, it's very fine-tuned on, on the littlest things. One time I was, I had drawn, and I was going to get to this myself anyway, but I'm going to say it. there was a chimney on one side of a house and I was thought the same thing, <laughs> and I, you know, and then I got a note back. I think we can move the chimney to the other side of the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I thought the same thing when I said it. he caught it. I'm like, oh my god, this guy is really focused on this. I'm not the one that tortures you. Nobody else would. Have <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what sort of comics did you did you grow up a, a comic reader? Do you have any superheroes or publishers? Because it seems like you've picked up quite a few tricks of the trade. Um, no, I mean, I read, what did I read? I read um, definitely Frank Miller. So mm. Frank Miller's Wolverine, Batman. Um, uh, as a kid, I was reading Ghost Rider, Richie Rich, New Mutants, X-Men, um, Love and Rockets, a series called Mage. Uh, what else did I collect? Uh, who else did I? Yeah, um, Swamp Thing. No, not so much Swamp Thing. I read a couple Swamp Things. Watchmen. Um, yeah, I guess that would be the kind of big overview of comics. Do you, do you remember if you had one that was kind of like your prized possession? Or, or if you still have it now, it's kind of like maybe your most valuable, quite literally most valuable after all these years? Um, gosh, they're in storage. I mean, I think, I think the Frank Miller... Wolverine is probably the four yeah. the four issue series of Wolverine is probably snicked. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, Ron. I, I, I wanted to come to you about the art in the book because it's it's super raw, it's super gritty, and it's got like it, it has a lot of heart to it. And that's at the end of the day, this at the end of the day, this book shows that there is a lot of complexity to an 80,000 year old man uh, and the things that come without living everybody around you. Really, uh, I'd love to hear about the inspirations you got for that. Uh, well. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry. I'm, st I'm still trying to th see if I can see any Richie Rich influence in there. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think how I can put that in so, somewhere. Um, yeah. So what was the question? <laughs> no, I, got, I got it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, honestly, it's so savage that, um, you know, I have to go to places 
inside my head that, uh, you know, most people wouldn't want to go to, but I'm not afraid to do it. So, um, I did a book before this one called men of wrath. And, um, I remember, uh, Kano said he read it and he says, it's really violent. And I'm like, if he's saying that's violent, then it must be violent because of this book is like beyond, you know? So it's just being able to go to that place. And, and, you know, it's funny because I can't look at it in real life. You know, it's, you know, I have an aversion to it, but I have to go there, you know, uh, artistically and look at it as artistically, not, um, not um, gratuitously. And that's what helps me. Is well, the violence side of it. I mean, I think, in the scale and scope of the characters that you know you and I have been working on, Matt, I think your the way that into what you mentioned in terms of the heart, like the the issue that was about love and loss and grief, you know, for me, seeing it drawn or come to life, I've been really struck by the pathos and the sensitivity to the intimacy of the characters and to the the scope of their feeling. Yeah, probably with. Uh Diana and be in his living room jumps to mind. You know, I tried to really create that intimacy, you know, and then there's a moment where it just, it cuts off there, you know, because she's sort of taken back by something he says. And, um, but I really try to create that feeling. And the, the things you guys are coming up with though, like with the Etta James and then the, the time, the flow of time, all these things are uh, a next level sort of thought going into the story that, you know, that there's a depth there that you don't get to see from a lot of, you know, movies and, and comics, you know, uh, so we're all very, um, lucky to, you know, to be, uh, able to read something like that where you really, you know, makes you think, you know, I, I love to hear about your perspective of honing in on a character because this is a character 80,000 years old and the story, you know, with his parents and all the things that come with living that long and wanting to die, wanting the ability to be able to die, yeah. uh, tapping into that headspace and, and, and helping hone in on a character that is that complex. Where do you find the inspiration for that? Yeah, no, I think that was one of our early conversations was like my, we had to decide like, does he want to die? Does he want to be able to die? Does he want something else? And I think, Part of it is he wants to be, be able to die, but also he wants to know like what his purpose is, you know, like that's the real thing he's after, you know, in like 80,000 years, he still can't figure it out. Like what hope is there for any of us <laughs> to figure that out? <laughs> right. Like it's such a universal question though, but I think that's what you kind of respond to is like, like him trying to figure out like, uh, like, why am I here? Like, yeah. what is my purpose? You know, and he's, he's slightly unique <laughs> in the yeah, world. But, uh, life after death even, like, you know, yeah. because if death and that's yeah. immortal as well and would the angels feel that way that they wish they weren't angels you know ever i mean it kind of there's so many layers to the thought of it that no. yeah. i think that's one of my favorite things we did too is we sort of sucker punched people with the opening the first issue was like all violence and action and then and then we have diana show up at his door and then we have that music up issue where it took us a long time to even figure out what song and like we looked at all kinds of lyrics yeah it was just like what do we do here and it was super important it was it was cool to just be able to bounce back and forth yeah. between that and, and as you get ready for this to go into new mediums a movie anime as you just announced in hall h are you having that in mind while writing this story at all no yeah no no <laughs> no no is it are those going to be like those are continuations of the story or is this kind or is it kind of like an adaptation i, I mean it's some kind of version of a reimagining so there's a couple of rules like the character i don't want to play with the history of the character but any other creators storytellers that get involved i want them to be able to make the story their own sure. have you considered because this there's a lot has happened in the world history over eighty thousand years a lot is going to happen in the future have you considered playing with different time periods for stories like that <laughs> okay and w which ones are most interesting to you? Um, I personally, I mean, we've spoke about maybe going to ancient Japan. I'm, I like the kind of, I like, I like kind of ancient human history. So like pre younger Dryas, like 12,000 years ago, like what, what were the civilizations that are no more that we have little fragments of? I'm interested to go back in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I want to end it with this because you've played so many cool characters. You've been a part of so many cool worlds. Anybody, uh, of uh, anyone or anywhere, you think it would be fun to just, in fantasy world, imagine Berserker interacting or inhabiting? In fantasy world? Uh, where do we want to go? In the Keanu Reeves multiverse? 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you actually, like, what do you mean? If you got to see Berserker uh, go into a world that you've played a character in or oh, lived in okay. yourself or a character you've played, I get to see them I, interact. I'd like to see Berserker. It'd be interesting. Uh, the world of Constantine. Yeah. To your point of angels and demons. Yeah, what could they make of him, you know? Like, yeah. what is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, awesome, guys. Thank you so much for the time, everybody. If you're not reading Berserker yet, go pick it up at your local comic shop and get ready for Berserker about to take over the world in every medium. And we're here to support it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned to comicbook.com for more from San Diego Comic Con.